back into it, man. I know we waiting on this wonderful food, but oh, where yeah. did you go to school at out here? So I know it, 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 it's funny because no matter where you're from, you never go to the school in your area. Well, yeah, that's funny you say that because, like, you know, I started off in you know elementary school. I went to 74th Street School, right, right in the okay, neighborhood. Yeah. You know what I mean? And remember, remember they had the CTPS test back in the day? Yeah, man. <laughs> so ironically enough, so you know, even though I was like, at that point, you know, I hadn't found music yet, so I was like a little gangster. I was, you know, I thought, yeah. but, I, but I used to test high on my CTPS test. So because of that, for junior high school, I ended up going to Laces. Oh, okay. And uh, at Laces is when I really started getting really into music, you know what I mean? And, um, and after there, I went to Hamilton High School. Oh, here we go, man. <laughs> Hamilton High School, man. <laughs> One of our rivals. I won't say my school, yeah, but okay. <laughs> you take the yeah, so, so I went to Hamilton because it was a uh, they had a music academy there. Okay. So I was I, by that point I was full fledged music. That's all I my I, I had the blinders on. I just I was practicing 10 to 12 hours a day. Like I was, my parents thought it was something wrong with me because I just I didn't want to do nothing else but the saxophone or music, you know. So I went to Hamilton because they had a music academy. And I could play, you know, I had, they had an orchestra, they had a jazz band, they had a wind ensemble. You know, I was taking piano, I was taking theory, I was taking electronic music. It was just, it was a real yeah. cool situation. But I do wish I could have stayed, you know what I mean, and had that had those opportunities here. You know, there's no reason why we couldn't have had those things here and you know, in my own yeah. community as well. But it, it was cool, it was very it, it was very good for me though, I will say it was it was uh, it opened my eyes to a lot of things musically that I hadn't really yeah. discovered. You know, I was in the, in the jazz, and I, but I, it opened my eyes to class, classical music and a lot of other stuff. How about you? Where, where, where'd you go? Where'd you go to school? Okay, so I started off on the east side, or when they would say the west side. I went to Raymond Avenue for maybe two seconds. <laughs> Obviously, my mom moved, so I ended up going to school on the west side. I went to Hancock Park. Okay, yeah, yeah. Then from there, I went to Burroughs. Oh, and then yeah. I went to Fairfax. <laughs> Bear Snacks. <laughs> Fairfax and Hamilton, one of the rival schools. Basketball, football, don't matter. They're the Yankees, we're the Lions. <laughs> we call them ham and cheese. They call us French fries. <laughs> so it's always been a rival with fun and games, but I, I would say one thing, like, we both had to go to the west side to actually see the things that we actually liked and enjoyed and gain knowledge from them, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Which a lot of people don't know. I mean, it's kind of tough being in, being from my areas because at that time it wasn't a lot of positivity, Yeah. for right. one. And when you go over there, it's a different state of mind. Yeah. Everybody's thinking outside the box. Like you said, you had a music program. Which a lot of people don't know, Hamilton has a really good music program. I mean, outside of my man right here, Mr. Washington, you got Omarion who went there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a, a ton of other uh, musicians who went to Hamilton High School. So very good and predominantly good uh, when it comes to music. So yeah, I, w I went to Fairfax, Melrose Avenue. I, I wish I would have <laughs> owned something on that block right now because it's very hot. Oh, yeah. To the oh, skateboarders yeah. and stuff. Oh, My yeah. school was on Melrose at the time. And at the time, I really didn't know about Melrose as much. You know, coming in from a different area. <laughs> You know, you don't know your surroundings. Obviously, I adjusted, but I wish, I wish I would have did some things at an earlier age out there because, oh, yeah. you know, you got so many uh, things going on right there. You got Pink Dolphin. Yeah. You got uh, the Diamond Stores. It's a real yeah. high commodity that area. Yeah, it's like a gold right mine right now. So, yeah. Yeah, I went there, played high school four years at Fairfax. Loved every minute of it. I thought the Hamilton girls are cuter. <laughs> I will say that. <laughs> yeah, we had the artsy girls. We had, yeah, the, we had the actresses and the, and, the, and the singers and the, uh, you know, the, um, it, Hamilton was cool for that. It was cool for, for diversity. Cause yeah, it, it like also a, had a- it was Like a great industry for that. Yeah, yeah. It had a, cause there was a humanities magnet. You had writers, you had all different types of people. I will say that, you know what I mean? You know, even though, you know, I wish they had that here in our neighborhood. Yeah. It was good. It was good for me to be there. Alright, so being that we done 
talked about our schools, man. We kind of want to take a trip back and see, you know, obviously I explained, uh, you know, Marion, but obviously, you know, some people would like to know the players that I played against and maybe some of the musicians, you know, on the, along the way that, you know, helped you or you shared experiences with. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Hamilton, was, it was full of musicians. I mean, like, I mean, before me, you had, like, Fish, Philip Fisher from Fishbone. They all went to Hamilton. And then, you know, while, while, while I was there, you had uh, Omarion, like you said, uh, people like Trevor Lawrence, he was a little before him too. Great drummer who's uh, produced for Eminem and, and uh, uh, Snoop and everybody else. Warren Campbell, who, you know what I mean? Who, who basically, you know, were all the music, all that stuff, and Mary and Mary. And, so a, a, lot of, a lot of different types of people. Then uh, you, have the, you have the jazz cast, people like Miles Mosley, Cameron Graves. Who also went there? Who are who are you know paving new way new ways for music? So it was, it was really cool. It was really cool in that sense. It was like it was guys doing all different types of stuff. It was gospel choirs. So it was a yep. lot of stuff. Trevor Ariza, Tyson Chandler, myself, Bobby Brown. Uh, man, it's Josh Childress. Uh, I mean, the list can go on. Yeah. I mean, uh, of how many guys that we had at that particular time. Yeah. For a lot of guys, we like play all over the world. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it was so much great competition, but before that, like, it was crazy because before we actually got to high school, we all played together on the traveling team. So like, everybody like knows each other. Then all of a sudden we go to different schools, we create rivals. But after the game, we really good friends afterwards. But it's just like on the court, I hate you right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it was, and I think it, that's what made it so much better of competition. And that's why we have so many much, so much players, so many players in the in the league or professional. It's because we were competitive with each other, but at the same time, we LA cats, man. We LA kids, man. We know what it is. Yeah. And, you know, we appreciative of each other. Yeah, yeah. And, that was some of the biggest things, you know what I'm saying? So other than that, what were some of the areas that you and your friends hung out? The main area we hung out was a place called Lamert Park. Yup. Because in Lamert, we had the World Stage, you had Fish Street Dicks, you had Project Glow. So you had two, you had, you had like the and classic. And you had the show. Oh yeah, you had the show. You were right there <laughs> on Crenshaw. You know what I mean? We had, you know, Lucy Florence, we had, you know, uh, um, Doughboys, dozens. It was all kind of like music in that area, music and, and art and dance. Little Washington dance studio. She's my auntie, so, yeah, you know. Okay. That was all over there, and uh, so we were over there all night long. It, it was a trick. It's like, you know, growing up, I didn't have a curfew because my parents knew I was all about the music. So I was out. I'll be at the world stage till two or three o'clock in the morning, chilling with, you know, what I mean, with 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 with, with legends like Billy Higgins, Horace Tapscott. Scott. They be up all night telling the stories about what they what it was like back thank on the road. You. Oh yeah, thanks a lot, man. Um, so it was cool. It was a cool area. I mean, I, you know, we would, I was there, you know, three, four nights a week. You know what I mean? For some people who don't know the Lemur Park area, uh, if you're familiar with Moesha, they used to always have it on TV. But Crenshaw, it's kind of like how Sunset is right now. It used to be uh, really popping. It's a hangout spot. Nice little park zone, you know, something you can hang out, do stuff with your friends. Back then at Wizzy, it was only like two video game consoles back then. And, <laughs> well, that's, know, back, that's back when you had, to, you had to go to an arcade to play video yeah, games. Man. <laughs> and and we, we're the video game era. Like, yeah. the, our generation is based on video games from Atari, Nintendo. Like, we've seen everything. So oh, I feel yeah. Like, you know, because I feel like we are the the future uh, yeah. age group when it comes to that, the futuristic stuff, oh, yeah, yeah. video games, etc. Because we, we, we existed in both. I remember, you know, going to 7-Eleven, playing Street Fighter. Yeah, man. <laughs> you had to go, we had, you had 75 cents, we had to make it last as long as you could, so you had to be good, or you'd be in and out. <laughs> one, one of the things I actually did um, when I got back home and I was playing for the Clippers, I bought myself an arcade. Oh, so wow. So I have an arcade. Oh, nice. <laughs> like 4,000 games on it, but it just takes takes you back, you know, to, yeah. to that feel good, you know, yeah, when you were a yeah. kid, man, so. How about you, did you, did you play around, like, you, you, were you over yeah, in Venice okay. Beach and stuff like that? Man, everywhere. I used to, so it used to be, you know, me and my crew of guys, we always played basketball. We would actually go to every, so many different parks. St. Andrews Park. Oh, yeah. Pan Pacific. Yeah. Uh, Centinella. 
Kenneth Hahn. Oh, Dirt. yeah. <laughs> you know, going and challenging everybody, you know, my crew versus your crew. It's like, like battling, but we on the basketball court. Oh, know? yeah, yeah. And every, like, we all over this city, man. From Crenshaw, Hollywood, man. To Compton, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. All, always just from hooping and hanging out, man. And, Gaining experience of friendship, man. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, we was all over this city at a young age, and then it just went global after that. What's going on, peeps? This is Craig Smith. Make sure you watch MorningMusicTV.com. Peace. All right, man, let's get into some of this music talk, oh, man. Yeah, this oh, is yeah, morning oh, yeah. music, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? So, like, what you listening to? I'm listening to a lot of different stuff now. I mean, um, Kendrick Lamar, Chris Bowers, my friends, Miles Mosley, Brandon Coleman, Stephen Bruner, Thundercat, um, Flying Lotus, that's a new record coming out. I've been, I've been digging on I, I got it now, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Probably haven't got it yet, but... Um, um, but I'm all over the place. Uh, Lauren Vulu. I listen to a lot of that. And then like I recently went to uh, Brazil with Stanley Clark. And so a lot of Brazilian musicians, they, they turn me on to people like Hermeto Pasquale and people like that. You know what okay, I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so it's so I've been I've been, you know, I've been I've been I've been expanding my horizons a little bit, you know. Dabbing, what I mean? dabbing, dabbing, dabbing here and there, right? you know, I've been listening to some 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 Armenian music, some, you know, all, all kind of stuff, you know what I mean? How about you? What do you into these days? I, I would say I am appreciative of all music, man. Doesn't matter what it is, if it got the right beat, right stare, and it's comfortable. I mean, I like it, but I, I listen to all types of music. I mean, from right now, what can I say? I've been into a little bit of rap still. You know, I listen to Kendrick, uh, the whole um, No Flex Zone. Oh, yeah. You heard that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No flex? Oh, yeah. No. You know, rap music, I, obviously, because it gets me riled up. Yeah, and yeah. Sometimes I do like to sit back and relax. Uh, I know when I was out in Jerusalem, I got introduced to Lana Del Rey. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, I listen to Cascade, those guys. Um, I will start listening to you much, much oh. more, <laughs> of course, after hearing that. And I know, and that's the type of music that I definitely like to listen to. Yeah, for yeah. For sure, for sure. Um, I even sometimes listen to Nirvana, man. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Nirvana, uh, Lincoln Park. I'm not all over. I'm an all over guy. If it's if it's music, it's good music. I like it. I want to hear. It. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the same way. It, 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 it depends on how I feel on that day. You know what I mean? Sometimes I want to listen to some James Brown. Yeah. You know, sometimes I want to listen to some, to some R.M. Catatonia. Sometimes yep. I want to listen to some Ravel. Yep. Sometimes I want to listen to you know what I mean? Billie Holiday. You know, I, I, John Coltrane. You know, some of the newer guys like, like, um, like, uh, uh, like I said, Chris Bowers, um, uh, Chris Turner, great singer. It's about a new record that's coming. Um, you know, it's, it's 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 there's so many things, there's so many, so, so much music that it's it's, so, it's almost hard to say what I'm listening to these days. By listening <laughs> to some of this music, how does it make you feel? It makes me feel encouraged. Um, like the other day, I went to a Snarky Puppy show, and. Um, Cause for a long time, music has been confined to like people were like, "Oh, if your music is too intellectual, people won't like it." I went to a Snarky Puppy show where they were playing some real complex music, and it was a you know they, they sold out the Troubadour, and the people were just getting excited over the trumpet solo. And I was like, "Man, this is cool. People are music is music is, is expanding." You know what I mean? And I think it's a, a lot of this due to the fact that you know a lot of guys these days, you know, they, they make the music on, on their own terms. Yeah. They're no, they're no longer so much controlled by the labels because you can go out and just start your own home studio, put your record out, put it out on iTunes yourself. So it's like music is kind of getting back more to the musicians. And so it's, it's in a good place right now, you know? I, I couldn't agree more. I feel it's at its all time high. And I also feel like it can also push you somewhere too. Like uh, I was uh, hanging out with my boy the other day, and he was like, "You don't remember this?" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh and yeah. He played it, and it just took me back right then and oh, there. Oh yeah. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. To that, like as if I was there at, in that point oh, in time. Oh yeah. You know, and it's just like you can reflect on so many things. It's good for the soul. Oh yeah. You build character. You build toughness. Yeah. You know? it, yeah. You can get your mind prepared for whatever situation you're ready. You know? Yeah. In a lot of ways, it's one of the fundamental like human human activities. You know, what I mean, it's almost like you know, 
you know, eating and breathing and talking. It's like music is, uh, like you said, it's, 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 one, it's one of the few, few forms of communication. It's like, um, like I, I was saying, I was in Brazil and I, I met people out there that I couldn't even, they didn't speak English, I didn't speak Portuguese. You know, the best we could do is try to speak Spanish to one another. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, um, but we couldn't really talk, but we became friends, like friends I, I still communicate with now today. And it was like, like when I got back home, we could talk, you know, Google Translate and stuff. But when I was there, the music was how we talked. You know what I mean? I met them. They came to the show, they were like, hey, we're playing around the corner, why don't you come play with us? So I was like, okay, yeah, I'll come play with y'all, and I get out there, and they just playing in the street. But they had about 500 people surrounding them, and we just sat there and played and took over a street in Brazil. And uh, then we hung out afterwards, they took me to their to they favorite late night spot to get something to eat, tell me what to order, because I couldn't read the menu. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was like, you know, we, you know I, I pull out my iPod, show them some stuff, they pull out their stuff, show me some stuff, you know, and that's, that's that's why I think like you know like you said like your friend can say hey listen to this and it just take you back and it's like oh I got a connection with you I didn't even know I had I didn't even know you was listening to that yep. what was you doing when that song came out you know what I mean like well, I can tell you what I was doing when that song came out you know yeah 